excited to welcome Tony Wright, the author of Left in the Dark book. So Tony, could you please give us an overview of your book? Hi Julia, yeah, I'll try to. Um, really the book is, I would say, it's a diagnosis of the human condition. It's an overview of how we've ended up in the situation we're in. It looks at our origins and it looks at the current state of our, well, our perception, our state of mind and why we behave in such a self-destructive way. Okay, and in your book you talk about the left and right brain polarities. So could you please expand on this? Yes, it's, it is a central part of what I, I put together and it, it initially sounds quite familiar because it's been talked about a lot for 20, 30, 40 years, left and right brain, and it's often been seen as overly simplified and so on, but I've looked again at the information and actually I think there's something shockingly obvious that's been missed by everybody, including the researchers in the field. And it sort of goes along the lines of um, one side of our brain no longer develops its full function. It's uh, quite limited in its perceptual abilities and its behavior is quite abhorrent. It's sort of, it's very frightened, it's very deluded and paradoxically it's in control. So uh, what I'm suggesting is we've ended up in a situation where we have very eminent researchers who've looked into these apparently different abilities and they've all entirely forgotten that they actually have a left brain as well and because it's in charge it's come up with conclusions that bear no resemblance to the data. So what we've got in effect is a side of our brain that isn't very functional at all. It's in charge and it's writing all the conclusions, interpreting all the data and we missed something that was really extremely obvious. So um, left side of our brain is, is also referred to as ego, our ego side, is that right? Simplistically, yeah, I mean, th there is a whole evolutionary context to this and how it happened, um, but in effect, yeah, in simple language, the left side of our brain, that what we call the rational side of our brain, considered by many to be quite advanced, highly specialized, also correlates with the ego, the sort of, the, the desire to be in control, to be powerful, to be, uh, to be, seen to be highly advanced and yet of course this is very circular it's effectively the left brain assessing itself and giving itself a clean bill of health well if you look around at the effects of the left brain being in charge which is pretty much un universally agreed in the neuro neurological studies uh, we're in a lot of trouble you know and we're even in denial that we're in a lot of trouble we we are clearly capable of causing vast devastation and effectively what is self-harm well I've, I've tried to frame this as a form of mental ill health. When you're very mentally ill, you start hurting yourself. Now, it sounds pretty extreme, and when you look at the data, and I'd invite anybody to go again and look at the data, a lot of it's online. Uh, there's many researchers involved in this. Uh, people like Michael Gazaniger, he's been around for a long time. His, his research, I think, is excellent. His data is excellent. However, when you look at the data, it's effectively warning you to be very, very wary of the conclusions because he has the same piece of neural equipment and it's his left brain that's making the conclusions. So, really, reframe the left-right brain theories and ideas, look at them differently, and remember you also have a left brain and it's actually looking at the data. Okay, so uh, we've talked about the le left part of our brain. What about the right part of our brain? Well, again, the data is very good. It looks like all the really cool stuff is is somehow linked to the right hemisphere. And I mean, I'm not saying we are our brain. It somehow facilitates who we are. That's as that's as much as I can say on that. But the traits, the behaviours that are, are associated with the left side, as I say, pretty dysfunctional. The traits that are known to be associated with the right side of the brain are where all the superlatives live. The kind of traits that come out of autistic savant syndrome, where people have phenomenal memory, phenomenal musical ability artistic ability and so on and so on, they're all somehow linked to the right side of the brain. Everything we'd like to do better, well the right side of the brain seems to be able to do it not just a little bit better, phenomenally better. And it's also very closely associated with things like compassion and empathy. And I, I propose that that's the last vestiges of our sanity, that's where the humanity still resides. Would you be able to give us some examples? Um, well, I, I think the sort of simple ideas where we have sort of theories and ideas to solve problems and yet there are individuals who can, they can be presented with a problem and they instantaneously know the answer. They can't always explain how they know, 
but it's it's like a direct knowing is one way to describe it. So these examples exist in whether it be mathematics or problem solving or just generally what we call insight and intuition. Remember, these are rational labels for mechanisms the left brain doesn't understand. Um, so really, it's it's reframing the data and it's also trying to include the the, the, the circular part of the equation where the left side of our brain is trying to figure out what's going on and including it's trying to assess itself well it usually gives itself a clean bill of health everything's fine the left side of the, of the brain's highly advanced and the right hand side of the brain has some strange abilities that we don't quite understand but that's the left brain talking mm -hmm.